The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for being uh, with us today. Uh, good morning to our friends uh, down under, uh, and good afternoon to those who are uh, in the land of the great white cloud, New Zealand. Um, how's the volume, folks? Kevin, you can tell me, or anyone else. Hello, Norbert. Good to have you with us. Uh, background sounds good. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Uh, always worry about uh, the technicalities of uh, all this stuff. So lovely to have you with us. Lots of uh, lots and lots of our old friends here. Alan, he's a tutorial guy. Albert, he's a tutorial guy. Chase, my smoking nemesis, still working on that, Chase. Uh, good to have all of you with us. Daniels, lots of Daniels. Uh, Dick Brewster, oh, there's a voice from the past. No, lovely to see you, old fella. He's a delightful guy, uh, Dick. We had great fun at a tutorial some years ago. Uh, Edward, George, uh, Jeff Connolly, he's a tutorial guy. Jerry, Jerry Winters with us, our uh, uh, broker. Uh, does most of the work for the Daniel Code. Lovely to have you with us, Jerry. This is what you've been waiting for. Uh, and I hope this will give you a, a better understanding of what we've got coming down the track for you. Uh, Justin, down the Hunter Valley, uh, glad to have you with us. Hope Dad's well. Uh, Kevin, nice to have you. Mark, he's the tutorial guy. I hope you're trading as well as I think you are, Mark. Uh, Marilyn, also. Look, uh, Marilyn's a tutorial girl. So is Michael uh, McDougall, who's with it. Uh, so is Mike Murphy. Uh, any of you people who've done a tutorial lately, I haven't heard from you in a while, let me know how your trading's going. If it's not going as well as it should, um, send me an email, um, and uh, we'll have another session and uh, sort out anything that's uh, not happening. Um, and... Uh, uh, do uh, let me know what's happening with your trading. Uh, <laughs> Tony D, uh, welcome in hot Chicago. Uh, good for you, mate. Uh, I know that stuff. Uh, all right, so um, lovely to have everyone. Let's uh, have a look at this. This is the uh, new 6S program, uh, which we've been testing for um, a couple of weeks now, um, finding lots of issues in the software. This is... Uh, uh, Jerry's an expert on programs, so the, the debugging um, is uh, as important as the trying to get it to do what you want. Um, and uh, we've got some interesting stuff for you. Um, I wanted to spend some of the time with you today talking about what makes markets turn. Now, you know, that's my obsession. That's what the Daniel Code's about, uh, what makes markets turn. And uh, as a trader, uh, that should be on your mind all the time. You should always be searching for independent indicators that will tell you when you're getting into a high probability zone for a market turn. Um, I say high probability because remember, uh, markets are all about probabilities. There are no certainties in markets, uh, just as there are no uh, certainties in life apart from death and taxes. Uh, but uh, the rest of it is all probabilities. And what we're uh, basically trying to do is refine the possibilities so much that they change from po possibilities to probabilities. Um, and that's what success is about. And I want to take you with me on a bit of a journey because uh, this is now uh, over two and a half years we've been trying to uh, get this program working. Um, and uh, as you know, we're, <laughs> we're, we're not a tech company. We don't have access to lots and lots of technical people. In fact, we don't have access. We have access to hardly any technical people. Um, and um, uh, the, the few that we do um, have uh, done a great job for us. But uh, time is always a constraint. One of the biggest problems with this stuff <coughs> is that the quickest way to lose your IP is to put it into code. Once you create a program, by definition, you tell the people who built the program what you're doing and how it works. And um, if you've been in this business for a while, you'll have seen endless numbers of incidents where people have just uh, put a thumb drive into a computer and walked out with the whole program. Um, that uh, happened recently at, uh, uh, I better not say where, but uh, well known, <laughs> very well known people in the business that we uh, deal with. Um, <clears throat> so that, that's the biggest problem, first of all. How do you uh, find someone that uh, you have a high degree of trust in to do this stuff and uh, 
trust is a very finite quality in uh, the trading world. Uh, pretty much uh, anything I do that uh, becomes uh, known uh, jumps up a few months later as someone else's program. Uh, but anyway, let's have a look at all this stuff and uh, let's uh, get moving. We've got a lot to talk about today. Um, and um, uh, the Daniel Code, a lot of this stuff, you'll, a bit of this stuff at least you'll know, folks. Uh, the way it's being put together, I hope you'll see it a bit different. Um, the Daniel Code is basically a set of proprietary ratios that control time and price in all markets. Um, and uh, I'm going to run through, firstly, four or five slides from a previous uh, webinar uh, because I want you to really get in your mind that... Um, let me find my audience view here, make sure it's changed for you. I want you to get clearly in your mind that markets are controlled by numbers and that those numbers repeat. Um, all of you will have heard about uh, our 666. That was the low of the uh, S&P index in the, um, uh, the crash low way back uh, when there was uh, a lot of fun trading, 2009. Um, and you see that, I've shown you this before, that number, that was a price number. Um, in the S&P, but time and price are the same thing on a different axis. Now, uh, I know it's very, very hard to get your head around this, but uh, that that's a reality. So what we've done, we've taken a price target. You can see on this chart uh, <clears throat> the price where the uh, S&P index bottomed uh, in March 2009 was 666. That happened to be the... Uh, second iteration of a 59 time cycle. Uh, the first 59 time cycle came in at the October 2007 high. Uh, it was valid. It, the market topped there. So once that's happened, we know a number is valid. We look for it to repeat. Um, and uh, you can see at uh, 118, uh, it's got the number one above it. That's because the program doesn't know how to count properly. Um, but in fact, that's two. That's the second time. Two lots of 59s, 118. And that gave us the low um, on the, uh, gave us the closing low um, as the market bottom, bottomed out at 666. Um, this is the number coming back again in the Dow and the recent sell off of the Dow. Uh, about the third day down with 666 points in the Dow index. In other words, repeating, repeating, repeating. Once we know these numbers are valid, they go on repeating. So, so far we've looked at 666. We looked at it in price, and here it is in time. The high um, in the uh, uh, S&P index uh, came um, at two lots of 333. In other words, same thing, the devil's number at the high just as we got at the 2009 low, but that was uh, uh, 666 in price. This is the same number in time. In other words, what I'm trying to show you is that hard as it is to believe, time and price are the same thing on different axes. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to get the same numbers. You're not going to get um, a 59 ratio in time and a 59 in price what you're going to get is a known Daniel Code ratio in time and a known Daniel Code number in price. Um, and that's when we use that expression, time and price are squared, meaning both of them are at known Daniel Code levels. And when that happens, a turn becomes almost inevitable. Now, that's what we're all about is turns. Here's the uh, high um, in the S&P that, uh, again, uh, was way up at three standard deviations from the mean. Can't stay there long. Um, and this is the 12-day chart, which we show you periodically uh, during the year. And this, uh, this S&P topped just 11 points off the target on a 12-day chart. So the further out you get in your time zones, the less accurate um, your pricing becomes because you're now using a bar, every bar that you use to measure these um, uh, numbers, these Daniel Code levels, um, is a function of a 12-day bar. So it's not as accurate to a uh, daily bar, but uh, all of you uh, who've been with us know that uh, uh, on the day of the high, uh, we had um, a Daniel Code number right there, which we're going to see a bit later as we go on. Um, and uh, here's another version of 666 and then half. Um, and this is the stuff that comes straight out of the book of Daniel. It's quite extraordinary. Uh, it's amazing. And uh, as, I, as I say when I'm uh, teaching this stuff, nobody is more amazed by all of this than me. Um, 
uh, I've told you the story before that I, uh, being an attorney, <coughs> I assumed you could learn trading from uh, lectures, from books, from a bit of practical experience. That's how you learn the law. Um, and uh, I spent many years on a wild goose chase going to um, uh, lectures and seminars by uh, uh, all of the gurus. It's got a very small G on it. Um, and uh, it didn't work. Uh, and uh, it might have worked for others. It didn't work for me. Uh, and uh, so I was forced to try and find the real reason markets turn where they do. Um, and that's how the Daniel Code came into being. Uh, what you're seeing now, this is uh, pretty much a full uh, trading chart. Now, this is only a weekly chart. We use daily charts as well. Uh, but this is uh, an almost full uh, trading chart, uh, a weekly chart of COMEX Gold. And as you can see, it's it's very, very complex. It's just an absolute jumble of time and price and anything else you can think of. So that's the challenge with uh, success, that we're trying to uh, – Create a system that will read enough of the enough of the important indicators to give us a very very high probability trading system. As you can see, uh, that is too, quite complex. Um, when we use the word seal, you know, we use the fourth seal, the fifth seal. Uh, uh, a seal is uh, the way I express what we uh, what is revealed to us by angles. Um, so uh, seal is the same thing as an angle, the same thing as a degree. Um, all um, angles have a uh, degree, you can measure that. Uh, and the simplest ones of them are price and time. Price is the first degree and it uh, comes at 90% angle. You draw a line to the right um, and that tells you against the x-axis of your chart uh, what the price is. That's a 90 degree angle, that's the first degree of trading. Um, and you can see here, this is the uh, S&P E-mini since the high. Um, and you can see how this market's absolutely just bounced off uh, the Daniel Code numbers at uh, uh, every high and every low. Uh, and uh, that's the first thing you do uh, if we're going to have a success trading program. We've got to get the market to, first of all, read two different sorts of, pr of uh, price. It's got to read not only the red lines and the black lines, which are retracements of the trend, uh, it's also got to read the blue lines, which are extensions of the range. Um, and the blue lines, uh, there's an infinite number of them. They go forever. Uh, so it's a question of what numbers do you want the program to read? What are going to be the relevant ones for the current period? Uh, this uh, chart that's now changed to here, this is showing you the current low in gold. Um, and you can see on the way down, it was giving us uh, pretty fantastic target recognition. Uh, it, uh, I'll just bring this up so I can give you the exact dates. Uh, we had the... Um, uh, the first bit of target recognition was on uh, May the 1st. Uh, well, the, in fact, the bar before that gave it you May the uh, April the 30th uh, gave you perfect target recognition. So did the next bar, um, and you can see that it's right on top of um, uh, the red line number at 1302.9. Uh, uh, in fact, the low of that bar was 1302.3. So six ticks variance, uh, and a number like. Uh, 1,300, there's actually 13,000 ticks in that number, 10 ticks to a point. So you're talking about six ticks out of variance out of a possible 13,000 ticks. It's very, very accurate, this stuff. Uh, then you had the rally up, and the uh, high of the uh, May the 10th was uh, 1323.4 against the red line at 1323.6, so just two ticks variance, that's target recognition. Uh, then we had a <clears throat> bit of a sell-off and the market uh, plummeted down, and if you just have a look at the market against the chart, at the low, you ask the question, has it missed its numbers? Uh, because there's uh, not the degree of accuracy at that low uh, that we would need to see to uh, create um, a uh, success or even a Daniel Code DC uh, trade signal. So bear in mind these things, there are more levels of complexity in markets than you normally believe. Uh, one of them is the way the market varies from using bar high lows to working on the close. Uh, so you should also always keep a close only chart. Uh, this is actually exactly the same chart uh, as you saw previously. 
uh, but I've converted it to a close only chart. The price level for each day is the close of that bar. Uh, so now uh, when we look at <coughs> the earlier targets, <coughs> it looks like it missed them. Uh, and when we get, but when we get down to the low, uh, <coughs> we can see at uh, 12.90 and a half that uh, red line there. Uh, we can see that this market has just hit that uh, in uh, three out of uh, five. One, two, three, four. Well, six out of eight uh, consecutive days. So <coughs> remember, target recognition, which is the first thing that happens to create a turn, okay? It's called the first degree because it's the most important. Markets turn at and only at Daniel Code numbers. Now, if that sounds a bit flippant, it's not intended to be. There's 35,000 uh, charts on the uh, Daniel Code website, which uh, you're welcome to look at. <coughs> and it's very, very hard to find a market that's turned anywhere except at a Daniel Code number. Um, it does appear that that happens occasionally, uh, but in fact what actually happens is the market will switch to a different sequence. It's not always in a daily sequence, which is the main tool we're using to create these numbers. Um, it can sometimes slip into a faster sequence or a slower sequence, uh, but it, well, there will always be uh, – markets don't turn except at the DC numbers, which is why I go on harping about them and hope you're paying a whole lot of attention to them, because if you're not, uh, you are uh, wasting a huge opportunity. Excuse me for one second while I see that I've missed to say I have not said hello to Sue up in Cairns, uh, nor Vicky, nor Terry down in Melbourne. Uh, Bill uh, with Ford is with us. Uh, lovely to have you with us. Um, uh, and uh, Sue, I hope your trading is just still going as well as it was. Uh, and Tom, Tom down in Florida. <coughs> lovely to have you with us as usual, folks. Okay, um, so um, target recognition is valid at a bar, high, low, and a close. So if you're going to build a program for that, <coughs> you have to uh, get the market. Uh, it has to be able to read uh, two different charts um, at the same time. In fact, it has to read a number of charts because, um, as I say, we, we're not always running on the daily. It, it needs to be able to read a six-day chart um, as well. Good, good, Sue. Glad to hear it. Um, Sue's going to be one of our great traders. She's a very, very smart lady. Uh, okay, so let's uh, keep moving here and uh, uh, let's see what uh, else uh, we've got about uh, markets turning. Time uh, is the second degree of markets, and that's at 180. So if you just draw a line north and south, up and down a page, north is uh, zero, south is 180. So uh, these uh, uh, time levels register on the y-axis. That's the axis running along the bottom of your chart. Uh, you can see I'm focusing here on the recent high and the huge volatility we had uh, in the S&P. Um, and uh, the, the high came in right on a 70 time cycle, um, and the low came in at a 62 cycle. And every high and low since then has come in at a known DC time cycle. Uh, I haven't put them all on the chart because it'll just uh, make a mess of everything. But uh, moving your eyes to the right a bit, you can see there's a uh, there was a 50, initial 59 cycle at the the high. There's a 59 cycle um, at the next high. I'll give you the dates of these. Uh, here we are. Uh, here's a uh, no, get too far out of too far out the targets. Here we are. Now I can see them. Uh, so this was, um, let me get a, I'll get a spotlight or a spotlight they call it. Here we are. Here's this uh, 59 high, 62 low, 59 high, another different, this is times and a half. This is a, a 59 and the half cycle gave you one bar off the next high. Uh, these uh, time cycles are valid to plus or minus one period only. Um, and here's this uh, next low that came in right at a 44. Uh, so uh, the reason that they're uh, valid for plus or minus one period only um, is that they can start from either a uh, chart high low uh, or they can start from the closing high low. So you've got this same argument, what chart are you looking at? Daily bars, uh, weekly bars, six-day bars, 
uh, are you looking at the normal open high low closed bars or are you looking at close only charts um, and the answer is that all of them um, have input Um, and the markets have the wonderful ability of switching uh, from one to the other <coughs> without letting you know. So you have to be on top of that stuff. You have to know which uh, particular sequence the market is tracking uh, with particular awareness of uh, what happens when it stops tracking that market. Uh, okay, so there's, your, there's what time looks like uh, at the major turn. Uh, volume uh, is the third degree. Um, and um, yeah, I've been trading for futures and forex uh, for over 25 years. Uh, when I started trading, volume was a big deal. Uh, we used volume as a confirming indicator. In other words, if you saw a, a rally on low volume, you assumed that it was probably going to fail. If you saw a rally on big volume, that confirmed that it was a genuine move. Uh, what's happened in that time, of course, is you've got a plethora of other markets. You've got ETFs, you've got options, you've got uh, any number of synthetics you can think about. Um, so if you really want to know what the volume was, uh, for example, uh, in the S&P, uh, it would be a big job to dig it all out because you'd have to uh, look at the volume in the big S&P, convert it to the volume in the little S&P, add those two together, uh, look at all the ETFs that tracked uh, the S&P, get that volume, uh, convert that, uh, which is in a different format, to the equivalent of, in other words, goes on and on and on. Um, and it used to be an important indicator, which is why uh, we originally had it as third degree, but uh, it's no longer reliable as a confirming indicator because Markets have got so fractured um, and spread over so many alternate uh, vehicles, not meaning cars, but trading vehicles, um, and uh, it's no longer reliable. I don't use it anymore. Okay, the fourth seal and the fifth seal, uh, fourth and fifth degree if you prefer, these are angles, um, and they're um, absolutely extraordinary. Um, this is the S&P, and uh, quite briefly, uh, this shows you that every high and every low uh, in the S&P, this runs from the uh, uh, recent uh, February high, um, every single high and low has come at a fourth or fifth degree line. And there's a plethora of them. If you put every fourth possible fourth and fifth degree line on your chart, uh, you might as well pack up and go home. Uh, what you have to do with these fourth and fifth degree lines is uh, treat them as confirming indicators. Simply because a market uh, made contact with the fourth or fifth degree line doesn't mean it has to turn. But it's one of the inputs that makes markets turn. So we have to be very aware of these. You can just see from this chart um, how uncanny it is that markets turn at these angles. Why does it turn at these angles? Well, these angles are made up of previous price action. Um, and once you get an angle, you have elements of time and price in it. Uh, any spot on any of these lines, uh, you can read off um, a price and a time. So you're starting to get a merger of time and price uh, when you talk about angles. And again, this is the same market, but this is where we find target recognition on the close. Um, all of these um, red lines were on the previous um, chart and uh, there's a few more on here. Um, and you can see at the high and at the low um, how amazingly, and since then the subsequent ones, how amazingly accurate these angles are on the close. Uh, but if you look at them on the open close chart, uh, the uh, open high low close chart, they just don't make any sense at all. So you, again, you've got to maintain two lots or two groups of these angles uh, for each chart, and it becomes um, quite a business, I can assure you. Okay, so uh, to build the uh, uh, success, uh, we start with price. That's pretty uh, standard. You can see at the uh, February high in the S&P, the all-time high, uh, 2878. And uh, let's have a look, here we are. Uh, that in fact was January the 29th, wasn't it? Uh, that high is, I'm not sure if that's the right one. I've got it looking at two different computers here, folks. You have to bear with me. 
this is uh, S and P. Here it is. Here's its high: two, eight, seven, eight, two, eight, eight, zero, oh, two, two, eight ticks away. Um, and there's uh, the, the high. The next day, it just uh, did that little outside bar and jumped up. 2878, very special number. Then in the rundown, which was full of volatility, that's the most volatility we've seen in this market for years and years. Uh, and with most systems, when you get a big expansion, sudden expansion in volatility, the support and resistance levels tend to fail. Uh, the Daniel Code's the opposite. When you get a big rush up in uh, volatility, uh, the uh, accuracy becomes better. Uh, and you can see the uh, that uh, crash low at... Um, uh, 2, 5, uh, 2, 8, 25, uh, and uh, the low of that uh, bar was uh, 2, 5, 3, 2, 50. Very, very good for that sort of range that it's putting out. Quite extraordinary. Um, and uh, I want to make sure that you understand that I don't make these things up for your benefit at webinars. This is the original members chart. This was posted at the Daniel Code website for members on January the 29th. Um, and you can see that number 2878 and others were already on the chart. That's how you get these numbers uh, from the Daniel Code website. Uh, so once we've got our uh, price targets in, uh, we can then start to add time. Um, in this particular example, at the uh, high uh, in the S&P, uh, the uh, all-time high, actually, the January 29 high, 2018, uh, that had an expiration of a 70-period time cycle. Now, these major time cycles, 44, 59, 62, and 70, were originally designed by me to work on the 6-day chart, the 12-day chart, the 24-day chart. I've been able to modify them slightly so they now work very, very well on daily charts. Um, but uh, there, there's a, there is a degree of complexity to them. But at any rate, we had a 70-period cycle. We call 70 the heathen number. Um, it's not really a heathen number at all. It comes from the uh, Book of Daniel, like all these other numbers, uh, but it comes from a different part of the Book of Daniel. It's not in the main uh, Chapter 12 that we use uh, to reveal the Daniel Code. Uh, but it was Sir Isaac Newton's favourite number, uh, and he used it uh, in the uh, piece he wrote. Uh, called Revelations um, on the Prophecies of St. John. Um, in fact, Sir Isaac Newton, um, who you should all be aware of, the father of modern science, he actually wrote more about his <coughs> religious beliefs and religious inquiries <coughs> than he ever did about uh, mathematics um, and physics. Quite extraordinary. Uh, and uh, he says, of course, that the book of Daniel uh, is the most important book in the Daniel because it foretells the coming of the Messiah. Uh, and uh, that's a little bit of hidden code in the book of Daniel again. Um, and then uh, moving on, uh, these things are just repeat all the time. The 62 cycle, it expired at the low. This was the uh, uh, big uh, crash low, I guess you could call it, if there was such a thing. Uh, 253250, that low was on uh, February the 6th uh, this year. Uh, and uh, here's our next number. Uh, we start seeing what we had at the high and the low of that particular period of very enhanced volatility in the S&P. Um, and we had a uh, fifth seal line uh, at the high. Uh, we also had a fourth seal line at the high and a fourth seal line at the low. Um, and the cluster of uh, fourth and fifth seal lines at the high also gave us a moonbeam, which is a further confirmation of the strength uh, of a time cycle. In other words, uh, these angles can pick up uh, clusters of time cycles, and when it has sufficient clusters of time cycles at the same point, it, we call it a moonbeam. That uh, is marking a very, very high probability uh, of a market turn. Uh, Forex is exactly the same. We have a lot of members who trade Forex. I know that these webinars, um, I seem to talk mainly about uh, futures, um, uh, but I should make an effort to do talk more about Forex for you. Uh, and this is the Aussie dollar, uh, US dollar chart. Um, and you can see it's exactly the same. Uh, these uh, two important highs, which we're looking at here, 
um, in August 2017 and in February 2018, late January, early February, uh, they both came on fourth seal lines, and one of them is a fifth seal line as well. Um, and you get the moonbeam clusters right at these highs. Um, and interesting with this chart in particular, you had two false breaks. You had a false break right at the low, the December low, and you had a false break um, in the uh, late January, early February high. And fast moves come from false breaks. Um, for those of you who um, are looking for them, um, a false break is a uh, break that just takes out the old high or just takes out the old low. Uh, buy enough to grab all the stops. It then stops and reverses, and that sets up the false break. Um, and fast moves come from false breaks, because false breaks, so many programs, uh, treat breaks of old um, uh, support or resistance as trend indicators, which they're not. Um, but most programs, many programs do that, which means that uh, if you, it becomes a false break, the vast majority of the market's on the wrong side of it, um, and that's what gives you um, high-speed moves. So remember that part, uh, and let's see what else we've got. So uh, these have been the challenges that we've been working through with this. I've been talking uh, to Jerry about this for, um, I guess it's over two years, Jerry, and uh, it's gone on and on and on for a number of reasons. One is that we uh, have very limited um, technical support access. Um, I'm very careful about who I work with, um, and uh, uh, this wasn't something I felt we could just, you know, um, hire in a bunch of people and get done. So um, it's taken a very long time. Um, and these are some of the challenges. The blue lines um, of range extensions uh, are infinite. They go from naught to infinity. Uh, if you put every one of them on a chart, all you'd see is a massive blue light. You wouldn't see anything else. It would blot everything out because these uh, extensions work on all time frames. You could start in a three tick time frame all the way out to a 24 day chart. You'll, you'll get exactly the same thing. Uh, so we have to do some fairly serious pruning <coughs> once we have those numbers. And how we do that uh, is we use regression analysis to find the most uh, probable numbers that are going to be relevant uh, to that market. The, the good news is that markets, even though there's an infinite number of, of uh, numbers, markets are stuck with a, a limited number of ratios. Um, and all markets use the same limited number of ratios all the time. Uh, that's the only way, really, that the, uh, the blue lines could ever be made to work. Um, and it took many years of research to figure that out. Um, the black and red lines are retracements of the range, um, and they can have a number of alternate swings to operate on. They can be working on the minor swing or the major swing. You've already seen they can operate at the bar high low or at the close, and they alternate. Just when you think you've got it all settled down, they'll switch to a different sequence. That's what markets do. The job of markets is to get 99% of the traders wrong, uh, and once it's done that, that's when it gives you the uh, big moves. Um, the time cycles themselves can be very complex. They can start from any high or low that's more than one DC standard deviation from the mean. Uh, that's not the normal standard deviation. It's a, uh, an amended standard deviation that we use for the Daniel Code analysis. Um, uh, so there's uh, many, many of those as well, far too many. Um, and, you know, you really run into paralysis by analysis uh, pretty quickly on some of these if you're not uh, being able to sort them out. Uh, and there must be limits to the complexity uh, that we can contemplate to put into a program because we're certainly not an IT business. Um, in fact, I'm a Luddite. Um, I uh, dislike all new technology. Um, I've managed to avoid most of it all of my life. Um, but uh, we have to use um, these, uh, the power of computers um, uh, because we have so many alternatives. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, we so we have to ad identify the dominant price and time cycles, which means making choices. Uh, my theory on making choices is every time you make a choice, you've got a 50% chance of being wrong. Uh, so we try not to make choices. We're trying to engineer the design of the program so that it doesn't have to make choices. Uh, and the more we can limit choices, the more accurate we can be. So uh, once we've done this, and we're very close to it now, we need to deliver the uh, success signals to you in the simplest form. We can do that already. 
uh, we can put them into something that looks like the Daniel Code trading program um, and uh, that will give you the uh, entry points, buy and sell, enter here, stop loss there, etc. Uh, and uh, uh, perhaps uh, four or five uh, key points on uh, how to manage those trades. Uh, we can do that uh, now. We've been able to do that for quite some time. Uh, but uh, many of you want an auto trade program. Um, I don't understand why it's so hard to go to the website and get the numbers and put the trades on, but uh, I guess uh, uh, a lot of people seem to uh, uh, find that difficult. Um, uh, time constraints, other commitments, etc. So uh, we want to try and create um, a semi-autonomous auto trade program. Now, it's never going to be a full auto trade program because we've seen what happens with those with previous uh, other people who've done those and uh, they can be a disaster. We need to keep some level of human involvement. In other words, we need to keep you saying to the program, yes, keep trading, yes, keep trading. Um, uh, and uh, that's another question of how do we do that. Um, so uh, this is what we've uh, managed to achieve so far. Um, this is uh, success. This is the every bar. Um, and uh, with trading price on its own, we can get almost all of these turns almost perfectly. What we don't get is the smaller moves, uh, the, the breakups of these uh, markets away from the intermediate, shall I call them, turns. Uh, with uh, success, we're getting all of these turns, uh, not missing any of them. Uh, and then you look at it and you'll say, right, oh, well, uh, what about the counter trends? That's always a concern to me. Uh, but you can see that just looking at the basic success buy and sell signals, uh, this is wheat, <coughs> incidentally. This is a very has been a very good market. Um, don't forget the... Don't forget the propensity uh, of uh, people teaching you to find good markets when they try to make their point. Um, and uh, wheat's been a very good market lately, uh, which is why I've used it. It simplifies the process, makes it clearer for you. But uh, that's not to suggest for a moment <coughs> that wheat is the trading norm or that you're never going to run into more complex patterns. These are very simple patterns. Um, and <coughs> this is the same chart. You'll see we've now got... One, two, three, four, five, six fails on this chart. So in six of these bars, uh, the majority of which are uh, outside bars, uh, we have fails. Now, outside bars, I know, uh, are a nemesis for many of you. Um, I don't think uh, Aksha, uh, uh, Akhtar's with us today. <laughs> He's... <laughs> he hates outside bars. Oh, Rob H. over in New Zealand. Good on you, mate. Glad to have you with us. I hope you're trying to keep that government in control. I'm not sure they know what they're doing, but <clears throat> you'd know better than me. Um, uh, Rob over in uh, New Zealand, very, very uh, switched on uh, trading uh, analysis and uh, good with all uh, markets. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, no, he's not with us. <clears throat> Every time we have one of these days where, you know, six or seven of the... <laughs> Forex markets have outside days altogether. He gets absolutely apoplectic. Um, and uh, one of the skills you need to know is you need to know how to trade outside bars uh, because they they just uh, they can create carnage. Um, and <laughs> uh, you can see that uh, of the six fails here, uh, four of them are outside bars. Um, so how do we handle those? Well, it's all these little intermediate uh, steps of trading that are the problem. Um, and we can get rid of some of them by using a synthetic trend study. Uh, this is not perfect. Uh, you simply can't, <coughs> we simply can't make the computers analyze the trend <coughs> at the same speed that I can do it with my eye. Um, and that's basically because uh, when you get to be um, a bit more advanced in your trading, uh, and come to me for a tutorial, uh, I will teach you some of the uh, tools we use to determine trend. <coughs> and <coughs> not all of them can be programmed because uh, for the most important ones, they're uh, largely science, but part of them is art. Um, and that means you can get alternate readings from the same tool. And the uh, computer program, uh, as far as our expertise goes, uh, just can't read and make 
valid choices between all of the alternate positions that these studies can relate to. So uh, the best uh, that I can show you and the best we can put into any computer program is a synthetic trend study. Uh, this one's not bad, uh, but it's certainly not great either. Um, and <coughs> um, but, but it has managed to get rid of um, four of those fails, uh, which is quite significant. We're only talking about uh, 65 to 66 days here, so uh, a trading year is 255 days. Uh, so we're talking about um, 255. We're talking about 25% 25, 25 uh, of a full year uh, or uh, three months, basically. Um, so uh, we've got the fails. Uh, uh, this is the thing that kills your equity curve. We've got them down to four. Uh, using our synthetic chart and uh, we can make that better and <clears throat> four failures from 66 bars uh, gives a 93.93 percent accuracy but and there's a big but for this and I call it uh, you might, what you might say here you know replacement for the human brain quite right Mike I can't uh, well nobody's been able to make this program uh, run better than my eyeball uh, does. Uh, but have a look at this. God save the Queen. Now, I use this has nothing to do with Meghan getting married uh, to Prince uh, Harry or any of that other tosh. Uh, this is uh, God save the Queen from 1975. Uh, Australia, uh, for those of you not aware, is a Commonwealth country. So the Queen, uh, the Queen of England is also the Queen of Australia. She's our titular head. She has no real power anymore. And what power of consent? Uh, and disapproval she does has is exercised by uh, an Australian representative who's called the Governor General. Um, and back in 1975, uh, we'd had our first uh, Labor government in about 30 years. Uh, Labor government is uh, equivalent to your uh, Democrats. They're the party of the working man, supposedly. Um, and uh, our opposition, our other party, the equivalent of your Republicans, is the Liberal Party, which is not liberal at all. In fact, it's neoconservative. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we had got a Labour Party in power for the first time in 28 years or so. Um, and the leader of the party was a, a very charismatic, very likeable chap called Gough Whitlam. Um, and uh, Gough was a uh, leading uh, barrister, QC, Queen's Council, about as high as you can get up the pole in the legal world uh, in Sydney. And uh, he was a bit of a political opportunist. And he saw that I should be saying, speaking ill of the dead, um, I... I, I knew Goff um, and I uh, thought he was a wonderful man uh, but uh, he was a bit of a political opportunist and he was uh, about as uh, about as much Labour Party as I am uh, which is like none at all uh, but he could see that he could uh, get to the leadership of the Labour Party very quickly and uh, wouldn't be offered the same opportunity in the Conservative Party the Liberals uh, so he became uh, head of the Labour Party whipped him into line and won a federal government election and became Prime Minister of Australia uh, all of that was fine. Uh, uh, the people were happy. Everyone was uh, pretty well sick of the old government and needed a change. And uh, we went on this wonderful, marvellous, magical mystery tour uh, with all sorts of weird things happening. The Labour government had so many priorities. Uh, they were trying to borrow vast amounts of money from some pretty shady characters. Uh, and it got to the stage that... <coughs> um, the uh, Goff and his government lost their control of Parliament. They couldn't get their spending bills through. So uh, that led to a crisis which involved the uh, Governor-General as the representative of the Queen <coughs> having to make a decision. And, uh, it's not as dramatic as it sounds. It's simply a question of uh, whether the mandate for the government is being upheld. If not, you invite the opposition party to form a government. Um, and that's, in fact, what happened in uh, November 1975. And the Governor-General, the um, Queen's representative, was a bloke called Sir John Kerr, K-E-R-R. -R. Uh, he was a leading... Uh, he was a judge, had been a judge himself. And him and Gough were allegedly great mates. But anyway, he uh, came down on the side that the Labour Party had lost the confidence of Parliament and... Uh, uh, they had to go. Um, so uh, Goff was effectively sacked um, and he gave a memorable speech on the front steps of Parliament House to the waiting media um, in which he said, uh, well may we say God save the Queen because nothing will save the Governor-General. 
um, and of course he was right. Um, and uh, after I've showed you all the wonderful things uh, which uh, success can do on uh, the wheat chart, I want to just bring you down to earth by showing you uh, this horrible pink slab of trading on the coffee chart. Uh, and this is actually an angular consolidation, very hard to spot because with normal consolidations, there are some patterns that give you a clue that the market's going to go into a period of consolidation. Um, in angular consolidations like this one, you don't ever get that clue. Uh, so uh, how well does any trading work uh, when you've got a market that's um, effectively sideways <coughs> in that very few of the closers uh, are giving you an opportunity uh, to exit with a profit? And if you trade daily bars, uh, that's something we uh, need. Uh, and uh, uh, so <laughs> well may we say God save the Queen, God save the wheat chart, uh, because nothing would have saved the coffee chart during this consolidation. Um, and I wanted you to see that, folks, because um, uh, the biggest, the biggest um, contributor to your uh, profitable trading is market selection. If you get caught uh, trading a market like this, it's very, very difficult. You will almost certainly lose some money during this period. Uh, so market selection is the vital thing. Uh, you need to be reviewing uh, about two or three times the number of markets that you intend trading. You need to review them uh, at least once a week, all of them. I do mine on the weekend. Decide which markets it is you want to be trading uh, next week. Uh, most people will pick one or two markets, normally the S&P mini and gold, and they stick to them uh, like a permafrost. And uh, that's not uh, good trading. <clears throat> Make sure you pick markets that have Lots of vertical volatility. We want markets that are going up the chart and down the chart. Uh, the ones that are continually overlapping themselves, as this market's done uh, in that period I've highlighted in the pink bar, uh, they are to be avoided. Okay, <clears throat> so they're the things we put together. I know it sounds terribly complex, doesn't it? Uh, it's taken about uh, 30 slides to uh, just bring together some of those things. Uh, uh, but... Uh, in any event, I've got uh, more to show you. Uh, but if you do want to be a super trader, um, uh, email me, uh, jneedham at thedanielcode.com um, and uh, tell me where you live and your phone number so I don't go waking you up in the middle of the night uh, and I'll be happy to call you and talk to you uh, about a Daniel Code trading tutorial uh, which teaches you in detail uh, all the things that I've already shown you um, and much, much more as well. Uh, for those of you who haven't already had a free trial, if you're interested in what happens at The Daniel Code, uh, just go to the website www.thedanielcode.com, uh, click on the free trial link and uh, you will get uh, access uh, for a 31-day free trial to everything that happens at the website. If you have any problems, uh, contact Terry at support at thedanielcode.com. Um, and if you haven't already had a free trial of Trade Navigator, um, we can arrange that for you as well. I use uh, Trade Navigator software um, and have for many years. I'm a partner with Trade Navigator, um, and uh, uh, that's why I use their software. Uh, okay, we're not really finished yet, but I want to show, show you our compliance statement. Um, it's important that you understand that there is a risk of loss in trading. In fact, there's a huge risk of loss in trading. Uh, the general expression is that 90% uh, of traders uh, will lose their first bank in uh, 90 days. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got that exactly correct. It might have been 50% of traders will lose their first trading bank in the first 90 days. In my view, 99% of traders will lose their first bank and their second bank and their third bank uh, because people come into trading with the idea that you can learn from uh, webinars, uh, you can learn to trade uh, from uh, free things on the website, uh, and from free books and free articles, and that's not so. Um, <clears throat> it is a wonderful thing to be a uh, really competent, successful trader. Um, <laughs> Jim, new guy, <laughs> been there and done that too many times. Well, uh, yeah, uh, that's what happens. It just goes on and on. Uh, but uh, if you really do want to be an elite trader, uh, shoot me an email. Uh, with your phone number where you live, I'll give you a call. Uh, if you're interested in doing a Daniel Code video tutorial, uh, they uh, start with an initial three or four days 
uh, of teaching and they will then run for anywhere from one month to 14 months depending on how much time you have uh, to put into your uh, the uh, exercising the things that I've taught you um, and that costs 7500 US dollars so it's not cheap uh, but if you want to do that please I'd be happy to teach you okay um, I wanted to just get out of all of this uh, and I wanted to briefly we have um, about seven minutes left um, let me just find this uh, document I want to give you. Um, <clears throat> and I want to just show you sugar and tea bonds today because it's just <clears throat> marvellous. <clears throat> uh, go to the Daniel Code website. Here it is, www.thedanielcode.com. This is your link for the free trial, folks. Just click on that. <coughs> and uh, to Terry, uh, Thomas has lost sound. I don't think it's our end, uh, Thomas. Um, uh, everything's all right here, isn't it? You sure everyone got sound or anyone else? Anyone else lost sound? Can anyone else hear me? Let's start with that. Just type in the question box if you can, thanks. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, Jim, thanks very much. Prompt response there. Uh, Tom, <coughs> if you're not hearing this, you won't hear it, uh, but you'll see it in the video. Uh, it's just at your end, you've lost sound. Um, okay, let's go and have a look at, uh, in here, uh, are all of the members' charts. Uh, this one uh, I'm interested in at the moment is sugar. Uh, and this uh, chart will open in a second, and here it is. Uh, and... Um, Look at this against the uh, members charts. You can see there's a, um, a number there at, uh, this was, uh, the, these charts are updated on um, Sunday, on the weekend and on Wednesday night. Uh, so the bar you can see there, uh, the last bar you can see there uh, is Wednesday's bar. And we had a blue line at uh, 12.35, 12.34. And the close of that bar was 12.35, exactly on the blue line to the tick, no variance. Have a look on your own chart as to what's happened today. This up bar today, uh, Thursday, um, has a high of 12.62. Of look at the next number up, the next two numbers up. 12.62 is exactly one of the blue lines. That shows you the degree of precision of these numbers, and it's quite uncanny. Uh, I wanted to show you a couple of others as well. Uh, let me see if I can find them. Very interesting. Um, uh, here's uh, one that's... Um, I will show you the easy one. Why not? Here's, uh, here's T-Bonds. Uh, let's go up uh, to our uh, list again. And uh, we want to get uh, T-Bonds. It will be under miscellaneous. Here we are. Here's T bonds. This is the members chart from Wednesday night. Have a look. The last bar on here that you can see is Wednesday's bar uh, that had a high of 142.17 against the red line at 142.19. Have a look what's happened today. The high today is 143.06. 143 little arrowhead. It's called a caret. 143 caret 06. That's the red line. That's today's high. Exactly, precisely, to the dot. Um, doesn't always happen quite that well, uh, but uh, almost always our target recognition uh, on these numbers is uh, really superb. It will just make you um, quite amazed. Uh, let's have a look at if there's anything else of great interest here. Uh, and uh, there's one example. Euro JPY. Have a look at this. Go to um, uh, where's my list gone? Here it is. Forex pairs, Euro, JPY. There it is. Just click on. It'll open. The last bar you can see on here is Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday's bar had a low of 128.234 against a number of 128.307. Look what's happened today. The low today, Thursday, is 127.720. Look at the next blue line number down. 
127.721, one tick variance. That's the sort of level of target recognition we get all the time, all the time. Um, and once you have that, that's your first seal, that's your first level. Target recognition is the beginning of the market setting up for a turn. Okay, folks, so um, I do hope you've enjoyed all that. I was going to show you um, a whole lot of charts uh, showing you just how accurate this is, but I've given you uh, three examples there. They're all good. Uh, what uh, is happening here? Uh, Akshay, uh, my friend, where are you? Yes, Akshay. What's to know what's the outlook for the US dollar index? <coughs> well, uh, let's have a look. Uh, here we are. Let's have a look at our six day chart. Let's have a look at the US dollar index. <coughs> Excuse me, here we are. This is the futures. <coughs> and. Uh, we had the uh, uh, high up here, uh, actually we had the big run down. This is a six day chart, remember? Uh, this uh, particular bar here, which is for the six days ending uh, January the 30th, the low was 88.255. Uh, there was our red line at 88.340. Uh, so it's gone sideways a little bit and then uh, it started to rally. Um, and uh, we had the buy signals for that. Uh, on the uh, fourth seal. Uh, is there, Mike, is there a replay recording available? Yes, um, there will be. Um, I'll get it posted. Uh, I send this uh, recording off to uh, Terry at our office in uh, Canada. Um, he processes it and posts it. It'll appear on the uh, website uh, either, uh, probably not later today, it's 9.28 uh, uh, where he is in uh, Chatham. Uh, so <clears throat> tomorrow. Okay, so um, there you are. It's pretty simple to see what's happening here. Uh, this is on a, a great big tear. Uh, has been for a while. Uh, what are the fundamentals to it? Well, fundamentals don't actually tell us anything about trading because uh, whilst we know the fundamentals, we can't uh, we can't really make a decision um, about when they're going to become active. But there's certainly there's going to be resistance at 94.30. Uh, and if it overcomes that, uh, then it's going to be retracing the major range. At the moment, uh, it's a very nice rally, but it's only retracing the minor range. Uh, and we could, uh, here we are. This is what stopped it for the moment, 94.05. Uh, a close above 94.98 tells you this thing's uh, now correcting the major trend. Uh, is that going to happen? I don't know. Uh, and uh, the point is you don't need to know. All you need to know uh, to be a great trader um, is to have um, uh, the, the, the daily bar. The daily bar, if you understand how the Daniel Code works, has within it all of the information to tell you what uh, markets to put on, what levels to put on, what orders to put on, um, and um, uh, where your stops go. Uh, so, uh, Jim, are those levels Fibonacci? No, that's a dirty word. Wash your mouth out. Fibonacci has to do with the reproductive rates or the fornications of rabbits. Not many people know this, <clears throat> but Fibonacci was a young uh, Greek mathematician. He lived in Athens in about uh, 1200 um, AD, um, and he went to a mathematical school. Um, and uh, people who are uh, totally focused on a particular um, discipline uh, tend to make in jokes. For example, uh, my daughter uh, lectures in statistics um, at uh, Bond University in Queensland and uh, she's what's called a stats queen um, and uh, people who do statistics um, know other people who do statistics and they have a lot of in jokes. For example, uh, she was wearing a t-shirt the other day with a curve on it saying, um, I'll meet you on the bell curve. Uh, which, of course, is the signal for normal distribution. But uh, to stats people, uh, that's hilarious. It's an in-joke that only a statistician would uh, understand. And Fibonacci was making an in-joke for the rest of his uh, people. And back in the 1200s, there was no refrigeration. There was no um, handy uh, shopping centre down the road. Uh, there certainly were no cars to hop in your car and go uh, and get yourself some uh, protein. So... Uh, the uh, population of Athens largely kept at home. They kept rabbits uh, in the same way as people keep chickens. 
Uh, they were a pretty enormously good source of uh, protein. Rabbit, rabbit meat is very tasty. Uh, a lot of English people uh, like to eat it. Um, other people too, uh, but uh, uh, they're easy to uh, raise in a domestic situation. So almost every house in Athens had rabbits, and that was their source of protein um, and of uh, fur, of course, as well. And Fibonacci's in joke was, if you have one male rabbit and you add another female rabbit, you'll have two rabbits. And uh, by the next time period has uh, expired, you'll have a baby. There will be three. And that will mean, uh, as you add up the uh, increasing fecundity of rabbits, you get five, uh, and so on. And that's how the Fibonacci ratios came to be about. And they're actually about the optimum breeding cycle of rabbits, uh, which was of great interest to the Greeks in 1200, uh, but of uh, uh, no interest to people in markets. However, uh, somebody came across this uh, Fibonacci uh, sequence and numbers um, and uh, thought they were rather clever and said, look, uh, this is sort of like the proportion of the Parthenon in Greece, one of the most beautiful buildings in the world. Uh, someone else said, oh, this is the same ratio as Marilyn Monroe's face. Isn't this marvellous? Well, they were approximate, uh, and that's all. But then eventually somebody wrote a book and said, let's put these numbers on charts and they'll provide support and resistance. Uh, and the answer is some do and some don't. The only reason Fibonacci's appear to work at all is the two major Fibonacci numbers happen to be close to two DC numbers, which are highly, highly accurate. Fibs, like Elliott Wave, are a virus. If you've got them on the chart, get rid of them. Use the Daniel Code numbers, you'll never go back. Okay, uh, Jim there, that's for you. Okay, so let's uh, just see if there are any other questions here I need to answer. Um, and Norbert sounds good, Norbert. I uh, hope you're enjoying being in your lovely country house there, mate. Uh, welcome. Yes, got that now. Uh, let me see what uh, this question was. Um, I did the USD. Uh, what charts we use to trade? Daily is too general. Do you use a short time frame like five-minute charts? Jim, I have traded everything known to man and a few unknown to man. I've traded short term down to using three tick charts. Okay. Every time frame in between you can think of, I've done. The reality is that the most money is made trading daily charts if you can trade them properly. And our job in trading is not to be right. Our job is to make money. The maximum returns in markets come from trading off daily bars if you're trading the Daniel Code method. Um, and uh, I have a lot of people come to me who are short-term traders. They never go back to it. Uh, with the Daniel Code, it takes you half an hour to work out your uh, orders for the day and put them on. The rest of the day is your own. Go and play golf. Go swimming. Go to the beach. Go, uh, I don't know, um, snow skiing, whatever your thing is. Uh, but we don't sit there looking at charts. Put your orders on go away. It's done. Um, so, uh, no, uh, it, it would appear to you, particularly if you're a short-term trader, daily is too general. It's not, because the only true support and resistance on any chart are daily true highs, daily true lows, um, and the uh, Daniel Code numbers. Okay, that's Norbert says, trading's going well, that's great. Uh, Good, Jim would enjoy that story. Uh, Norbert said trading's going well apart from a panic attack. He had, everyone has a panic attack when they start trading real money. Uh, start small, start small. Trade money that means nothing to you and work up from there. Okay, folks, well, thank you for being with us. That's it for today. Um, if you've got any particular topics that you'd like me to cover, uh, please send me an email, jneedham at thedanielcode.com, jneedham at thedanielcode.com. Uh, and I'll be happy to put that into the next uh, webinar for you. Mike, great to have you with us, all of our uh, uh, usual friends and our new guests as well. Uh, thank you for being with us, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed today, and I hope it's given you much to think about. All the best for now. I look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Bye-bye.